Hello everybody, this is Tekka and this video is a little special. What we're going to be doing is going over 10 applications that content creators must have on their Linux computers. What makes this video special is I'm not going to be rambling at the mouth about software or industries that I know nothing about. I actually got some help in this video from three additional content creators who will be talking about the software in their specific niche. The categories in this video will go as follows, from writing, to photography and photo editing, audio production and audio editing, video production and video editing, and then a special category at the end, so make sure you stay tuned for that. So jumping right into it, we have our first guest to talk about the best writing applications. Hi there, I'm Tom from Switch to Linux, and the software I want to talk about today is LibreOffice. As you may or may not know, I am actually an author as well, publishing, I think I have six or seven books published right now, and I use LibreOffice to do not only my writing, but the formatting, basically all the typesetting and all the things that you need to do to take your book and send it out to the printer. LibreOffice does it. In fact, not only does LibreOffice do it, it generally does it a little bit better than Microsoft Word because as I leave the Linux and open source community and enter into the writing communities that I'm part of, I find a whole lot of people who are also producing their own books all also use LibreOffice. Definitely it will have the ability to interact, interface with, and have compatibility with the vast majority of Microsoft Office documents. There's some little things here and there, but for the average user, you are not gonna have any compatibility issues. Just definitely keep an eye on the fonts that you are using inside of your document. But overall, LibreOffice is a completely free and open source suite. It's going to contain the writer documents, the Excel spreadsheets, the presentations, which are very popular. It also, though, contains the databasing for free, so if you're a small business owner needing to do any mail print systems, you will be able to just push a little button, upload your database, push print, and it will print out all your mailing lists for all of your clients all in the background. It also contains templates for hundreds and thousands of business cards, mailing labels, and a series of other templates that you might need for printing out anything you need in address labels and business cards. And if you do not have your exact label in there, you can go into the editor and make it. These are why I use LibreOffice for the most powerful open source office suite that you can find in Linux and in Mac and in Windows. And when it comes to producing an ebook, I could just upload my documents to an e-generator, but they generally do not have good high quality content as far as the file it sends back. But there is an open source application called Sigil that is available in your Linux repositories, or you can download it for Windows and Mac as well. It's going to enable you to make every fine detail perfectly under your control, a perfectly validated ebook file that you can distribute out through Amazon, you can distribute it through all of the different ebook sources. So literally you go to any place where you can buy ebooks, you will probably find my ebooks there for sale. And those ebooks are all done with the FOSS software Sigil. So definitely check it out. Now I'm going to talk about my two must-have video editing applications on Linux. First one and what I think is the best is Kden Live. Now the reason why I like Kden Live so much is because it everything just works. It has the traditional linear video editing system that you would expect with the sound production, it has all kinds of transitions, effects, and anything else you'll need to produce a good quality video. But my personal favorite is keyframing. It's very similar to how Adobe Premiere Pro does its keyframing, and that is the software that I come from using most often. So you can set up keyframes just like you would in Adobe with certain timestamps, and you could do transitions. I do a lot of uh, images moving around on the screen with that feature, and much, much more. Now, this is just a percent of what this program can do. I highly recommend you check it out and maybe consider it for your next video production project. Now my second choice, I've discussed both of these applications before and that would be DaVinci Resolve. This would be my go-to video editor if it had a little bit more support for some of the native file formats on Linux. And this software is way more feature packed than Kden Live and has some of the best color correcting and color editing tools when it comes to a video editing program out of 
anything no matter what if you're running Mac, Windows, Linux, it is one of the best for color corrections. The software is commonly used in the film and movie industry because of its color correction and color editing abilities. In addition, it does have a lot of built-in audio editing functionality that Caden Live lacks. But until some, there's some improvements with the file formatting and just the ease of use on Linux, I'm going to continue using Caden Live as my go-to video editor. But I hope to see the day that I get to fully switch to DaVinci Resolve on Linux. And speaking of audio, let's move on to some of the best audio applications on Linux. Hi, I'm Anfa. I'm a music composer, producer, and sound designer. I work with audio production for video games, and I also make videos about the ins and outs of the Libre slash Linux audio production ecosystem. TechHot has asked me to recommend you two essential pieces of software that I use. But first, I need to say something else. TechHot has told you before in this video that Kaden Live is the way to go. But I will say, try Olive Video Editor. For me, it does a much better job than Kaden Live as it's fully GPU accelerated more stable and has better editing tools. So, of course, both programs I'll recommend are free software. It's Ardor and Audacity. Ardor is a full-blown digital audio workstation. Um, that means you can make music in it, score films, uh, record bands, or produce sound effects for games like I do. It's a heavy tool, however, and there's a steeper learning curve than with, say, Audacity. But once you learn Ardor, there is little limits to what you can do with it. I can recommend you a video I've made, which is a all-in-one beginner tutorial for Ardor 6. On the other hand, we have Audacity, which is an audio editor, not a digital audio workstation like Ardor. What's the difference? Mm. In Audacity, all the editing is destructive. That means if you remove a piece of audio, you can't get it back unless you use the undo function or you just import a different copy of the source material. In Ardor, however, if you delete a piece of audio, you can just grab and drag an edge and you get it back. It's all there. What I mostly use Audacity for is checking my final exports. I use an effect called Fast Look Ahead Limiter. It's a LATSPA or LV2 plugin, and uh, we don't need any input gain. And it's a good idea to limit to negative one decibel, decibel because that's uh, that makes sure that nothing clips in the later in the process when the audio is re-encoded on YouTube after you upload it. And the release time of 50 milliseconds is usually sufficient. Now I can do apply. And you can see that our peaks have been reduced and they are no longer clipping. Applying effects in Audacity is just like editing, it's destructive. This is now all I have. The only way to go back is to undo. Ardor is non-destructive. It's all about having things be separate and being applied automatically and you can change any part of it in the chain and all the rest stays the same so you can be very productive with it. But it's a heavy tool. Audacity is not a heavy tool. It's easy to pick up. It's easy to do things. Uh, you can even record audio in here. And if you really wanted, you could make some music, but it would be like trying to shave yourself with a shovel. Okay, uh, I'll drop in one extra thing for you. And that is FFmpeg. So once I have increased the loudness of my exported video and I export that to a separate audio file, now I need to replace the new audio and put it into my already rendered video file. But I don't want to like mess up my video project or create a new video project in my video editor just to replace the audio. That would be really silly. So FFmpeg is the perfect tool for the job. You run this command and you have a new video file with swapped out audio. Much faster than creating a new video project. <laughs> Okay, that's all from me. Big thanks to Tech Hut for inviting me for this segment. If you'd like to learn more about audio production on Linux with free software, check out my channel. Bye. So now I'm going to talk about screen recording and live streaming. 
These two programs that I use go hand to hand with the video editing software I use, and the number one screen recording device that I use is OBS Studio. OBS Studio is extremely feature packed. It does a great job recording the screen, rather that be the full screen, uh, partial part of the screen, and there are tons of different settings to go ahead and customize. And in addition, this program does have very, very good live streaming services available. It works very well anytime I've ever used the functionality of the live streaming. I've never had any issues. OBS Studio is more of an advanced suite, so it will take some time and tinkering and maybe a couple tutorials to be able to learn all the different features within the program. And on the other end of the spectrum, there is the Voco screen. This is another really, really great screen recorder. I use this if I want to do a quick little B-roll shot or anything like that. It does do better with selecting areas of the screen you want to record than OBS. But like OBS, it's extremely featureful. You could drop webcams in, you can record the screen on certain devices, and the entire GUI of this program is extremely user-friendly. And if you're looking to get into doing screencasting or recording tutorials, I would highly recommend you go ahead and try out this piece of software. So now, last but not least, let's take a look at photography. Hi, I'm Shane Milton. I'm a photographer that uses Linux primarily, and I'm here to talk to you about my two must-have programs for photography for Linux users. The first program I'm gonna talk about is Darktable. It is a non-destructive raw editor. It is designed for editing your raw files, and you can manage your photo library with it also. You can connect cameras to it, shoot tethered. So if you're in a studio, you can shoot tethered, take your photos, it'll send them directly to the program so you can see the image up on a screen if you're shooting in a studio. That is great for food photography, studio portraits, product photography, that's very good for. But it also has masking abilities, drawn masks, to really isolate where you wanna do your edits on the program. You can isolate just your highlights for adjusting the exposure in your highlights to bring back some detail in like a sky. You can also do basic retouching in it it has the ability to remove objects in the scene, but you can also remove like acne on people. Um, it has a great plugin system. You can create your own presets that you can then share on the internet for other people to use, just like in competing programs. But you can also have Lua scripting is the scripting language it uses to add the ability to send files to external editors or merge files together for if you're doing like an HDR, high dynamic range image like of a landscape. It has a lot of those abilities through the Lua script plugin system that it uses. The other program I wanna talk about is GIMP. It is essentially a Photoshop alternative. It's not fully non-destructive, but it is on its way of becoming a fully non-destructive application. Uh, I use that for advanced skin retouching or removing unwanted objects from the background, maybe just doing a composite in a photo to add things into the photo that are not already there, to add kind of a visual effect to the photo. Um, but it's mostly used for image retouching of portraits or wedding photos, and just to enhance the image, fix people's blemishes on their skin, remove acne on high school senior photos, but it does produce very good clean results and you can do advanced techniques with it that you would normally do in Photoshop or other competing programs like frequency separation you can do to fix the color tones of people's skins but then retain detail when you're removing the acne. It also has the ability to open raw files in sort of a plug-in manner. You can actually tell it to open a raw file and depending on if you have Darktable or another one of the open source raw editors installed, it will open Darktable, let's say. It'll open Darktable, you can process your raw file, and when you close Darktable, it'll send a 32-bit image back into GIMP for you to further edit. And that is one of the nice features that I do like with GIMP, is it is becoming more of an advanced program for photographers, or for that matter, YouTubers that wanna generate thumbnails but don't wanna pay for a program just for producing thumbnails. It is a very great program for doing that. But those are my two must-have programs for Linux-based photographers. 
I use them on a daily basis and none of my clients know the difference between whether I'm using Photoshop or open source. All they know is the photos look very good and even look the same, if not better, than when I was using those commercial programs. Now I just use open source and so far open source has actually been very good for doing photography uses. Thank you all so much for watching and thank you especially to everybody who's contributed in this video. I would recommend anybody to go ahead, go down in the description, check out all these channels and subscribe to them. All of their content is wonderful. Switch to Linux has everything to do with Linux. Shane's photography has tons of great tutorials in regards to the applications he's talked about. And Yunfa has a great library of tutorials in regards to audio production and audio editing. If you think we left out anything or any programs in these specific categories that you think should have been in this video, please leave them down below. I would love to check them out. And don't forget, subscribe to this channel as well for more content like this. I hope you have a great day and goodbye.